Hi everyone, in this video I'm continuing to take a look at question 16 part B of the 2012 extension to HSC exam. I've just worked through part one in a separate video, so have a look at that if you haven't already. Here I'm going to look at part two, which says use mathematical induction to prove that the sum from j is equal to 1 to n of the inverse tan of 1 on 2j squared is equal to the inverse tan of n on n plus 1, and that's for all positive integers n. Now before I jump in, it's almost guaranteed that in the process of doing this induction, we're probably going to make use of the result we just showed in part one. Uh, usually that's what question writers do, they, they kind of lead you into it. So the key here will be to keep an eye out for anything where we end up with the inverse tan of something plus the inverse tan of something else, because chances are we then want to make use of um, the result we showed in part one. So uh, yeah, let's take a look. All right, so this is what we want to prove. We're told to use induction. So obviously the first step of, of induction is to show that it's true for the uh, first value that n can take. So here that would be n is equal to 1. So we're going to show true for n is equal to 1. So uh, let's have a look at the left hand side. So what would that be? That would be um, simply we're only going from 1 to 1, it's just going to be the inverse tan of 1 over 2 times 1 squared, which is the inverse tan of 1 on 2, and we can probably just leave it there. Um, so what's the right hand side? Well that's going to be the inverse tan of 1 on 1 plus 1, so that's the inverse tan of a half, which is equal to the left hand side, which is also the inverse tan of a half. So therefore we can say it's true for n is equal to one. Then we have our uh, usually easy step, which is to assume true for n is equal to k. So in this case, that would be assuming that the sum from j is equal to 1 to k of the inverse tan of 1 on 2 uh, j squared, that that's going to be equal to the inverse tan of k on k plus 1. All right, so now we're on to the hard bit, which is to show true for n is equal to k plus 1. Um, so here, uh, typically you need to pick, do you do the left hand side first or the right hand side first? Normally, as a rule of thumb, I'll pick the, e the side that looks simpler. In this case, um, the right hand side looks a lot simpler to put in n is equal to k plus 1. So let's have a look. The right hand side would be equal to the inverse tan of k plus 1 on k k plus 1 plus 1 or k plus 2 and, and that's pretty much it for the right hand side. So really our task here in part in step 3 is to show that the left hand side can eventually simplify to this. And as I um, mentioned right at the beginning, chances are at some point we're going to rely on uh, this result here. So uh, that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll just turn over at this point to start on our left hand side. So our left hand side when n is equal to k plus 1 will be the sum from j is equal to 1 to n uh, k plus 1. So k plus 1 of the inverse tan of 1 on 2j squared. So the inverse tan of 1 on 2j squared. Now we're looking to um, end up with the inverse tan of something plus the inverse tan of something else. And actually when you're dealing with these summation proofs that involve induction, um, there's a really simple way that you can turn this summation into something plus something else that also helps you link to step two. Because step two, our assumption was a sum from j equals one to k. We can very easily incorporate that here by just saying the sum of j is equal to 1 to k of this, and then adding on the k plus 1 item separately. So 
let's do that. So we'll say this whole sum is the sum from j is equal to 1 only up to k of the inverse tan of 1 on 2j squared. And then outside of all of that, plus the k plus 1th item. So that's going to be the inverse tan of 1 on 2k plus 1 squared. So, so this summation only captures this bit here. So at this point, we can now say, well, this, this first bit here, the bit inside the summation, we know what that's equal to because we've assumed it over here in step two. So that's the inverse tan of k on k plus 1. Inverse tan of k on k plus 1. And then we've got our um, k plus 1th item. So the inverse tan of 1 on 2 k plus 1 squared. And here, as I mentioned, is what we're looking for. The inverse tan of something plus the inverse tan of something else. Well, we can simplify that using what we just proved in part one, the inverse tan of something plus the inverse tan of something else equals this. So here, maybe it might be helpful to just define some x and y's to make it really clear how to link to part one. So let's um, let x be this thing inside the first inverse tan, so k and k plus 1. And um, let's let y be 1 on 2k plus 1 squared. So um, now we can say, therefore, from part 1, the inverse tan of x plus the inverse tan of y is equal to the inverse tan of, and I'll just make sure I get this right, x plus y on 1 minus xy. x plus y on 1 minus xy. All right, so I guess now what we need to do is insert x and y into this and simplify, although that's kind of, you can all, you almost see right away, that's going to be kind of messy, but if we're very careful with our algebra and our um, simplification process, hopefully we end up with simply a k plus 1 on a k plus 2 inside this um, inverse tan. So, um, okay, well, maybe, maybe before we dive too far in, we know we're going to have to work out what x plus y is and what 1 minus xy is when, when x and y are defined in this way. So maybe just separately we'll do those just one at a time. So let's say um, x plus y will be k on k plus 1 plus 1 on 2k plus 1 squared. So um, I guess we might as well just get a common denominator here, and then the natural common denominator would be 2k plus 1 squared. We've already got a k plus 1 here. So we could say that's going to be k times, if I want 2k plus 1 squared on the bottom here, I'm going to need a 2k plus 1 up here, and then just the plus 1 over 2k plus 1 squared. Um, and there's probably not much point in expanding this yet, I think. I mean, we could probably just write, it, it's probably a bit more natural to write 2k bracket k plus 1 plus 1 over 2k plus 1 squared. And we'll probably leave it there and see if um, there's an easy way to simplify when we start to put it all together. Um, on the 1 minus xy, so the bottom part here, 1 minus xy would equal 1 minus k on k plus 1 times 1 on 2k plus 1 squared. So what's that going to simplify to? Um, well, it's 1 minus the k times 1 would just give us a k. And the k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 squared would just be 2k plus 1 cubed. And again, might as well get a common denominator. So that's going to be 2k plus 1 cubed minus k on 2k plus 1 cubed. And uh, that's probably a good place to turn over 
where we can now say therefore x plus y on 1 minus xy in bringing this together. So that's going to be, maybe what I'll do is I'll, instead of doing 1 divided by the other, I'll do 1 times the reciprocal of the other because it's going to be easy enough to flip this to make it the reciprocal. So here the x plus y is going to be um, the 2k, k plus 1 plus 1. So 2k, k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 squared times the reciprocal of 1 minus xy. So it'll be 2k plus 1 cubed on the top. And then on the bottom, 2k plus 1 cubed minus k. So 2k plus 1 cubed minus k. And now we go through the hard work of trying to simplify this and show that eventually we're going to get to k plus 1 on k plus 2. All right, so is there any easy wins? So we're multiplying here and we've got uh, the twos which can cancel out. The k plus one squared will cancel with um, two of these. So we end up with just the one k plus one. So that, that's helpful. Um, and now we probably just need to bring it together. So we're gonna have a, a two k, k plus one times k plus one or k plus one squared plus uh, another k plus 1, the 1 times k plus 1, and then um, this will just be 1 times this denominator, so that's going to be 2k plus 1 cubed minus k. All right, so now, um, well, I know there's a k plus 1 here that we can factor out, and that's good news because... Um, Remembering we're trying to end up with k plus 1 on k plus 2. So it makes sense to factor out a k plus 1 if it's obvious to. Um, so that will give us uh, 2k and a, a k plus 1 left. And then just a plus 1. Now I think we're going to need to expand this denominator and then simplify it and see if we can factor out a k plus 2. But step 1 will be to expand it. Maybe what I'll do is I'll get a 2k plus 1 and then just do the remaining k plus 1 squared because that's easy enough. It's going to be um, the first one squared plus twice the product plus the last one squared. And then um, we've got our minus k over there at the end. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, um, now I'm probably going to have to keep working on this denominator. So let's leave the numerator as it is. 2k, k plus 1, plus 1. And then we'll have our 2 bracket. And I'm just going to expand in this k plus 1. So we're going to get k cubed plus 2k squared plus k plus k squared plus 2k plus 1 bracket minus k. Just got to be really careful here. So let's just keep going. So we're going to have k plus 1, 2k, k plus 1, plus 1 bracket. Um, and then let's expand the 2. So we're going to have 2k cubed plus, um, well actually 2k squared plus k squared is 3k squared times 2 is 6k squared. k plus 2k is 3k, so that's going to be plus 6k, plus 2 times 1 is 2, minus k. And now, um, so let, let's, um, let's go k plus 1, and maybe here, actually maybe this numerator I should probably expand this. So we'll get um, 2k times k is 2k squared plus 2k t times 1 is 2k plus 1. And this is all over um, um, 2k cubed plus 6k squared and then 6k minus k would be plus 5k plus 2. Now this is where we can do something a little bit cheeky, which is 
Make use of the fact that we know we're trying to get to k plus 1 on k plus 2. We've already got a k plus 1 factored out. We know, we kind of know that we're going to want a k plus 2 factored out. And therefore, we're going to have to end up with k plus 2 times this so that they can cancel. So really, all we, all we kind of want to check, and you, we could even do it just as a side note, um, um, we can just say that k plus 2 times 2k squared plus 2k plus 1, what is that equal to? Let's expand it, show that we get to this, and therefore go, therefore we can factor it in this way. So it's almost like reverse engineering rather than, I guess, trying to use some fancy rule to factor this. We can just say, well, I know this is what it needs to factor to. Can I expand it to show that, that it is this denominator? So let's do that. So k times 2k squared will be 2k cubed plus k times 2k, 2k squared plus k plus 4k squared plus 4k plus 2 which is equal to 2k cubed and then we get 2k and 4k plus 6k squared k1 plus 4 is plus 5k plus 2 so that is equal to that so therefore, we can say that our x plus y on 1 minus xy, what we were working on up here, is equal to k plus 1, 2k squared plus 2k plus 1, on k plus 2, 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. These cancel, so it is just the k plus 1 on k plus 2. All right, so um, therefore, we can say our left-hand side, going right back to our um, left-hand side, we kind of stopped at this part, this point of the working, because we saw an inverse tan of something plus inverse tan of something else. We've now worked out that it's going to be the inverse tan of this x plus y, 1 minus xy. So it's going to be the inverse tan of this k plus 1 on k plus 2 which is equal to the right hand side that we were able to work out all the way back here so we can say that is equal to the right hand side and maybe at this point um, I'll just turn over and we'll say therefore it's true for n is equal to k plus 1 and then step four um, is basically however you write your induction conclusions. I'm just going to be lazy and say by induction, the sum from um, what were we trying to prove? Sum from j is equal to 1 to n, j is equal to 1 to n of the inverse tan of uh, 1 on 2j squared is equal to the inverse tan of n on n plus 1. All right, and there you have um, that induction proof done. Now, uh, I think the essence of that question was, um, um, I think all of this is fairly straightforward. I think the first, I guess, tricky bit was having the idea to break up this summation so that you could first of all link it to part two, which then, uh, or step two of the induction, which then helps us link it to part one of the question using the result. And then from there, I think it was really just being very careful with your algebra. And then this bit here, kind of reverse engineering the factorization of the denominator. Maybe some students might get caught up there and kind of really just rack their brain asking how do I factorize this um, whereas you can take a little sneaky shortcut and just factorize it to what you know it needs to be to get to where you need to get to and then show that expanding is always easier than factorizing I, I think so it, it was just a, a nice shortcut there but then you get to the result so hopefully that all made sense and it's now something you could probably do on your own if you had to 
And uh, what I'll do in the next video is I'll work through the final part of this uh, 16B. All right, tick boom.